Hey, Bismarck UCC. I understand that we had no sound this morning. And so if you joined us for worship this morning, you saw me up here talking, you might have seen Darcy playing on the piano, but except during the time of confession, I think you heard nothing. And so we're gonna do worship again. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Darcy here with us, so we won't be able to hear the beautiful music and just centering pieces that Darcy played this morning. But we are blessed to be able to just gather again for really, is there a time in our lives when we can have too much worship? I'm not sure that there is. And so as we gather for worship, I am trying to see if I can see your comments up here. And I think, or am I sideways? I think we might be sideways. Are you guys looking at me like this? I think you might be. We're really sideways, I think. <laughs> hey, if you're joining us online um, right now, I see we've got one person, two people viewing. Uh, can you comment to me and tell me if we're sideways right now? So, I'm not getting comments, just write, let me know, is it, is it facing the right direction? It's a weird way to begin worship, but uh, it's looking weird on my screen here. So I'm just trying to see if I can get your comments up. We'll give just a moment for people to join us here and Let us know. So you're able to comment throughout this worship service and if it's, um, tell us if it's popping up right. We're gonna do a worship service here. If you missed the first part, um, what happened this morning was we had just lost some sound and during our morning worship service. So. We're going to be doing a modified worship service here. We're still at Bismarck United Church of Christ, but we're missing out on getting to see. So it looks like we are sideways. And so we're going to turn it and get it facing the right direction here. There we go. And we'll move. Perfect. There, it looks like we're in the center and facing the right way. All right. Well, if you're joining us live or you will be viewing us, joining us later on today, it's such just a pleasure to gather with you and to take a moment just to center ourselves, be present. And I'm calling this our unmasked edition of worship this morning, since this morning uh, with our in-person, we were all masked as we are in worship right now. And also we had no sound. And so hopefully you can hear us now and feel free. Uh, this will be an interactive worship experience. So if you wanna write a comment, you wanna post a like, you wanna post a heart, I can see the screen right here and am able to respond to those, whatever comments or questions or thoughts, reflections you have in the midst of this space. Let's just try a whole new way of doing worship together this afternoon now and um, be with each other. Let's join our hearts and minds though in a spirit of prayer and a spirit of practice. Let's take a deep breath and let it out and let yourself be fully present exactly where you are. If you're eating lunch, awesome. Keep eating lunch, joining us in worship. If you're sitting in a chair or you're listening as you're out for a walk, awesome. May it be a prayer walk. May you be grounded as you are seated. And let us join together in a call to worship. Your response, if you care to join in, say these words, we come seeking God's wisdom. 
So those words again, we come seeking God's wisdom. And this call to worship is based on the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. It goes like this. God's wisdom is radiant and unfading. She is easily discerned by those who love her and found by those who seek her. We come seeking God's wisdom. To fix one's thoughts on wisdom is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from worry. We come seeking God's wisdom. Wisdom seeks those worthy of her. She gr graciously appears to them on their paths and meets them in every thought. We come seeking God's wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is the sincerest desire to learn. To learn is to love her. To love is to keep her laws. To keep her laws is to draw near to God. We come seeking God's wisdom. Friends, we have two scripture readings that we'll reflect on in this interactive service. The first is from Amos chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Hear these words. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. In the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your hearts. But let justice roll down like waters in righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In our second scripture reading, is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Hear these words. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps, and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding house. But the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also and said, Lord, Lord, open the wedding banquet to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends our reading from the Gospel of Matthew. As we are in the midst of this time of worship, wherever we may be, if there are some thoughts you have on either of these scriptures, on Amos 
or Matthew, I invite you to com put them in the comments. Let me see them and let's share them with each other. And let us join in a spirit of prayer and as we reflect on these words. Almighty God, we give thanks for these scriptures from Amos and from Matthew. We give thanks for the scriptures from the wisdom of Solomon, which opened this time of worship with one another. We give thanks for our variety of experiences, for all the ways we know you have learned of you and that we continue to follow you. We pray that you will magnify your love in our lives. You will uplift us. You will strengthen us. You will empower us to be people of your will, people of your love in the world. We pray that the words of our mouths in the meditations of all of our hearts may be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, any thoughts on Amos or Matthew? Amos that contains this famous verse that we have heard so many times, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In this Gospel of Matthew, with this parable that sometimes makes us uncomfortable and has us left scratching our heads about these foolish ones and the wise ones, the wise ones who brought enough oil and the foolish ones who did not bring enough oil and so were locked out of the wedding banquet. And the wise ones who when asked by the foolish ones, will you share with me? They said, I cannot, for there is not enough. These scriptures come to us and are spoken to us in a time in our history as we are in the midst, continued midst, of a pandemic. As we are in a nation that is so divided, as half of our nation is celebrating and half of our nation is hurting, we come. And we may be tempted on which, however, we fall on the half of our nation to say we are the wise and they are the foolish, or we are the foolish and they are the wise. Ah, but we would so much miss the point of these scriptures. We would so much miss the wisdom of Matthew and the wisdom of Amos and the wisdom of Solomon were we to say that. Instead, we come. We come knowing that sometimes each of us are the foolish ones, and sometimes each of us are the wise ones, and sometimes each of us reach out for the kingdom of heaven and want the day of the Lord to be now, and sometimes we fear the day of the Lord for sometimes justice does not feel like it would be the easiest route for us. And sometimes justice is what we yearn for with our whole lives. And so we come. We come with all of that messiness, the messiness of being human, and we come with our lives in these lamps our whole bodies, our whole spiritual selves are these lamps. We come awaiting the day of the Lord, awaiting the kingdom of heaven, awaiting this river of justice to roll down and righteousness to flow like an everlasting stream. And we want to yearn for that with all that we are, but we look at our lives, we look at our spirituality, and we wonder, do we have enough oil in our bodies to sustain us to whenever that time may come? Do we have enough energy to be 
people of peace, even in times when there is great division? Do we have enough wisdom to seek out God's love, to be loving to our neighbors, regardless of we if we are being the foolish ones or they are being the foolish ones? Do we have enough strength in our spiritual lives to sustain us and be people of light, even when it seems like there's darkness around us, when we sit and we watch and hear of loved ones dying when we sit and hear stories of people who are lonely, when we watch our nation struggle, how do we live as bridesmaids in the midst of that? How do we live as people, as children of wisdom in the midst of that? How do we live and love into the kingdom of heaven when we're not sure if we ourselves are full enough of faith to carry us through? And this is why sometimes we're the foolish ones and sometimes we're the wise ones. For sometimes we look at our lives and we see our lives there and we are so diligent about doing habits and practices that fill our souls to overflowing, that fill us with love, that allow us to live out God's love out into the world with everything that we are. And other times we are like the foolish, We only put in our lamps of light enough to get us through part of a day. Not enough even for the week. Maybe we only pray on Sunday mornings at 10, 11, or 12. Or maybe we only pray once a month. Or maybe... We just check in with God on those major holidays. Or maybe we forget that each breath we take comes from God. And we start to be emptied. We start to deflate. We start to forget that we are the light of God. And we forget to keep that light burning within ourselves. For God gives us these lanterns, these candles, and God lights our lives with them. And says, go, go and be a light in the world. Go and love with everything that you are. Go and keep burning. But sometimes we're foolish. And we forget that a flame needs fuel. We forget that a candle needs a wick and the wax. We forget that a lantern needs to be trimmed and needs to be filled with oil. We forget that our spiritual lives need continuous renewal and fuel to keep us centered on God's love, to keep us ready, ready to embrace whoever it is walks into our lives, whether they walk into our lives in need, or they walk into our lives with opportunity. That we must be filled with God's love. We must be burning in the ways of God's will. So that whatever might come, whether it's full of joy or it's full of pain, We can make decisions grounded in that flame of God's compassion. 
that the wonderful things, the joyous celebratory things in our lives don't suddenly pull us off track down other paths that we never intended to go because we got caught up in it. Or that the places of despair don't pull us down and out of track away from God's love because we get filled with bitterness or resentment. But that through it all, we keep ourselves centered on God's wisdom. We keep ourselves centered through so that through any night or day, our wicks are trimmed, our lamps are filled, and we are ready to serve whoever may appear before us. Ready to serve in the midst of God's love. Ready to follow Mother Wisdom each day of our lives. However you fill your oil lamps, however you fill your spiritual lives, Whatever wick and wax you need to grow, may you incorporate it in every moment and every day. Sometimes you may be foolish. Sometimes you may be wise. But in each day, may you breathe. May you remember that you are a beloved child of God. And may you keep reaching for love. Keep filling yourselves up with God's promises so that you may never be emptied and so that you may always overflow with compassion, with empathy, with the seeking for justice for others. Friends, I thank you for joining me online during this worship. I thank you, and I humbly apologize to you that we had no sound earlier. And I ask you to pray with me. We've been doing this movement prayer in our worship, and it's always good to move. It's always good to be reminded that God's love is also embodied within us. And so in this prayer, we begin by awaiting, and we put our hands at our waist. Almighty God, we await your presence. We breathe in your love, and we await your compassion. And we raise our arms up in the air. And Almighty God, we allow you to pour your love upon us. We allow you to fill us up, fill us with compassion, fill us with love. Fill our lanterns that that flame you first lit within us will continue to burn brightly through every night and every day. And we accept as we put our arms across our chest and give ourselves a big hug, we are reminded that God loves us. Almighty God, we accept all that you pour into us. We accept your love. We accept that we are called to love ourselves. We accept that we are called to love our neighbors near and far. We accept that we are called to love you with all that we are. And we attend. We attend out into the world with our lamps full, with the spiritual oil of God's love continuously pouring in, burning as brightly as we can with God's love, we attend out into the world with our very lives. Will you join me now in saying the prayer taught to us by Christ Jesus? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, may you be filled this week. May you go in peace, and may you be light bearers in everything. Follow wisdom, follow love, follow God with all that you are. Thank you for joining us live. Thank you for joining us later. And thank you again for your patience this morning. May you go in peace. May you go in blessing.